Good evening and welcome to Arab TV. I am Vic Zakur, your host for this evening. Um, I'm very happy today to have a very important guest here, but we'll tell you more about her in a second. Um, the, because the subject is really complicated. Um, why is it complicated? Because the human being is the most complex per thing in, uh, that God had created. And the subject is about understanding ourselves as human beings in this changing environment today. Everything is changing so rapidly. We've got to find out who we are, what are we good for, what are our special talent, and how can we deal with the uh, community, whether it's the family members, our work. So it's really complicated. And you see, usually I do not even have anything to prepare. This time I brought my notes with me because I need to learn and, 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 and say the right things. So now, who is going to tell us all about this? Well, what is it, first of all? It's, it's a negr uh, an negr Enneagramma, right? No, it's just because. Enneagram. Enneagram. Now, Enneagram, Ennea is nine in Greek. So, Enneagram is something that has to do with nine. And I don't know what is that. Uh, Hala will tell us. So, our guest today, welcome, Hala. <laughs> is Hala Ayla. Hello. Ha Hala was born in, in Iraq. Yeah. And she spent her the first 21 years of her life between Baghdad, Riyadh, and Beirut. So, she's well diverse in the Arab world. And then after that, she went to France, to Switzerland, to England for her undergraduate and graduate studies. Mm -hmm. And then in 91, she came to the States. Yes. In the States, she again continued her, 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 her postgraduate studies, specifically into metaphysics, into personal development, yoga, and transpersonal uh, psychology. Now, the most important thing is, is she went and uh, studied with two professors, or were they professors? Well, they're authors, Scholars. and, and, and they're, they're basically they're experts in the field Expert of in the field Enneagram. Of Enneagram yeah. right? And uh, that's where she's got her training. For the past maybe 20 years, she's been teaching that in seminars for the public or for the pri on the private uh, sessions. And uh, so I'd like to welcome Hala to our show, and thank you for coming, Hala. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So, so let me see. Did, did I say everything that you want me to say about you, or did <laughs> I miss something? I think we're good. We're good. Okay. Very good. So, let me see. Let, what is this Enneagram? Tell us about it, please. Well, uh, the Enneagram is a very complex subject, like you said, because it deals with the human being, and it deals with human motivation. So... It is basically, it divides humanity into nine different types of personality drives. So it's a very, very ancient system. It's been around for hundreds of years and it came most recent in mo mo more modern times through the Sufis. And they don't know exactly whether it was Turkey, Iran, or in the, somewhere in the Middle East. It came through the Sufi learnings because it was to deal with the human being and how to uh, bring out the best in the human. And what they've discovered in this study of the, this ancient study of the Enneagram uh, is that basically what it does is it looks at humanity and then it looks at what is it that motivates us? What is it that drives us? What is it that moves our personalities, our energies forward and to becoming more of who we were here to be or backwards, which a lot of us go backwards uh, in our life and we always create problems and situations that are difficult. And so this identifies nine different Enneagram types or what is called personality types. It's not a personality, so just don't uh, misunderstand because a lot of people think the Enneagram is, d denotes nine personalities. It's not about the personality because the personality as we know, our personalities are extremely complex and would not fit into nine, but it's what drives us what gets up, us up in the morning. And humanity has nine different types. And the Enya that you talked about is the nine. And the Enneagram is the nine-pointed diagram, which I'll be talking about in the next segment and what these nine different types are. So, so, so basically you said the Sufis, I think also it goes way back in, in, in history to the Judaism. 
Christianity. Absolutely, the the Gnostics and 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 the the Tree of Life, the Kabbalah, the Kabbalists, and it goes way back before then even. Uh, but it's so it's its origins are very obscure. Not many people actually know the origins because it's a very very um, ancient system. It could have been around for a long, long time, but they know the modern, who, who brought it in more recently. And there, of course, we can get into that, but that's really not the interesting part. Okay. So, so having said that, how does it help people? I mean, yeah, well, how it helps people is that it, it helps you understand yourself. What is it that drives you? What's, what is it that gets you up in the morning? What you're here to do in life? And uh, are you doing it in a way that is constructive, that you're succeeding in your relationships? Because it helps you understand yourself and therefore also understand other people because it tells you how this person or that person, what is it that may motivates them? Now, it's kind of obscure at this point because I have to run through the nine types for you to understand more what I'm talking about, yeah. which I will be doing. Yeah. But it helps in communication because you're understanding where the person is coming from. It helps in self-discovery, understanding other people, in relationships in general, which is really when you're talking about bettering relationships we're talking about bettering humanity because once we can get understand ourselves and then understand other people then we have more compassion we have more understanding we have more empathy with others and our problem is these days is a lack of understanding a lack of compassion a lack of empathy for other people especially people that we deem are different so what's great about the Enneagram is it levels the playing field because these types, whether you are sitting here in San Jose in a studio, or you're in China, or you're in Mongolia, or anywhere around the world, there's still these nine different personality uh, drives, Gosh. okay? So basically, that person in China and the person here that has this particular drive, this is the same motivation. So do you see how humanity becomes a much more... Um, understandable place. You no longer are wondering, why did they, this person do this? Why is he acting in this way? Why do they keep, why do I keep repeating the same thing over and over? Well, the Enneagram system broken down is, is uh, it, it makes you understand these things and make you basically a much more successful human being because you're Absolutely. coming from the most elevated aspect of yourself rather than the most deteriorated so, aspect so, of so, yourself. So in general, then people maybe think that what motivates them or what makes them tick uh, yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, is, let's say, money. But mm -hmm. in reality, if, if you analyze that person, yeah. it might not be money. It might be something else, right? Yeah, but you see, it's not just the money. It's that how... So, yeah, they may be motivated by success. Which see, the, as a concept. Yeah. They want to achieve. So one of the types is the achiever types. Right which is a very interesting type and is very prevalent in the United States, is this is an achiever country, right. which is one of the types of the Enneagram it is called the achiever. They are the go-getters. Those are the ones that have very goal-oriented and they want to succeed. And yeah, money is part of success, but they want to succeed at everything, right. basically. Yeah. And yeah. we all do. Yeah. And the other thing I want to tell you about the Enneagram before we move ahead, once I talk about them, is you're going to find out that we have all of them we have int we're interested in all each of them. Each one has all of them. We each one of us has yeah. an interest in all the nine drives, right. but one of one of them is, is the most important, prevalent for us and for our growth. Is it the most important for that person, or is it the most is is the most relevant for that person? It's the most relevant for what they want to do. Yeah, but that person might not know it. This is what I'm trying to Well, nobody say. really can identify. You see, this is what, when, when I talk about these nine, nine personalities, which I should do soon so that people are not, uh, so you know, wondering about? what I'm yeah. talking about, um, is, is they, you start to identify, oh, I do this, I do this, I do this. And then there's one of the, them that is the most important thing that is the driving force behind your, lo your life what drives your talents, what drives your gifts, what drives you, gets you up in the morning, what makes you tick, like you say, is a good and word. And you help people then find out that. In yeah, them. because once you know what, you're, what it is that motivates you, once you understand what right. motivates you, okay, and you see what, what you do that makes your life fall apart, which happens a lot to a lot of us, and what you, what you can do to make it more uplifted, more successful, more happy, 
more abundant, okay? It, there's, this is a map. It's a map that shows you how you fall down and really create problems in your life and what you can do to, to, have, to have it all, basically. And this shows you the methodology, how to do that. Now, now I might just jump and, and, and maybe go ahead, but we'll get back on track. Yeah. The question I have is, okay, if you're dealing with a person one-on-one, -on -one, you could help that person identify their you know, yeah, by asking them a lot of questions. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my mm -hmm. question is, how can you, let's say, if I want to find out what is my boss's mm -hmm. uh, mentality or 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 what is the motivation, motivation, or yeah. what is my neighbor's, what is my yeah. fiance or my wife? Yeah. Um, how well, can see, we do it without meeting that person? Well, you can only if you if the person that is say let's you you want to know about your wife. Let's say you have to really be telling me things about her that are accurate. They're not your perspective that, you know, this is what, you know, this is what really is important for her. This is how she likes to do. I see. So and somebody she, describes. Yeah, you person. have to describe it very accu accurately, accurately because a lot of people don't really know themselves that well. And a lot of people don't know each other that well. You know, we make assumptions about people. That's why it's better not to do it for someone else. It's better right, to do right, it just for yourself. Right. But I know how to ask the questions to get you to, to think about yourself more. Because it's not about me telling you what your drive is. It doesn't really matter. It's about you discovering the depth of your being. And this is what this is about. Okay. So, so let's go back to you then. How did you discover this? Or why did you choose this type yeah. or this method to That's teach a good your question. classes and stuff like that? Well, I have been studying the Enneagram for well over, so about 22 years. I've been studying the Enneagram. When I first studied it, studied it, I've been involved in higher education for a very, very long time. And when I came across this particular seminar or class, I found that the information cut to the chase. So it really gave you a lot of information and knowledge about yourself and other people in a very compact, elegant way so that you didn't need to do 20 years of therapy or you know, workshops and seminars to know yourself. You could, in a limited amount of time, identify what your worst traits are and what your best traits are. And it puts you on a path to succeeding. Now, this path may take you the rest of your life because you always can grow with this system. But it made me think, oh, this is a system that is teachable, that is transmittable in the most elegant, pure fashion and that will help people grow. And that's what I was interested in, helping people become more empowered and be able to understand each other and uh, understand themselves, basically. So yeah, it's funny. I just remember this when we were talking. My son came to me and when he was going to college, he said, you know, I'm going to go to San Jose State and uh, what should I se select? What kind of major should I go into? And I said, what, what, what are your goals? And he said, well, I just want to make a lot of money. I said, look, it doesn't matter then. There's a lot of good engineers that don't make, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of engineers that don't make money, a lot of doctors mm -hmm. that don't make money, a lot of attorneys. What, who, whoever succeeds is they, the, those who are doing what they like to do. Mm -hmm. So what do you like to do? He said, I like computers. I said, then go into computers. Right, right. And he went into computers and, you know, um, he graduated and in his first job, you know, within the first five years, he was making more money than I was making. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. said, you see, if he went into something else, he would not. Right, right. Yeah. Well, but what, what the Enneagram will look at is what is it that motivated him on a deep level? What was it that dr dr drove him to choose this and not something else? You know, so that's how we bring it back to the Enneagram. Okay. Um, so, so you're calling it wisdom, I heard, you know, and what yeah. you what, why you call it wisdom and what's the wisdom Because about it? it is really, once you, uh, once you really understand the system, you will understand that it is a, uh, a wisdom teaching. It's a teaching that has uh, a perspective, gives you perspective, becomes, makes you feel more wise about who you are and makes you feel more uh, understanding of others and therefore gives you a level of wisdom that is much needed. Uh, now, I started a wisdom school in the Middle East. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that, but I started a wisdom school where I'm teaching these classes, these seminars. This one is the beginning, and then I have other seminars I'm going to be teaching on how to become a little bit more uh, wise 
in our approach in life. Uh, and I've been teaching that in the Middle East now mm -hmm. uh, for the last three years. This course I've been teaching in Beirut, in Dubai, and I taught this in, um, in Amman several times, Beirut several times, in Turkey, and I wish to, to go further. But I have taught it in the Bay Area as well. And I find that, like I said, it is one of the most powerful uh, systems of self-development and understanding there is around. What is the word for wisdom in Arabic? Hikmah. Hikmah. And that's what we went to school. Uh, that's Hikmah. right. Hikmah. And Hikmah. I took Hikmah. off on because I'm born in Baghdad and because I know of, about the, the wisdom schools of Iraq back when in the 12th century, I think, the, there was the uh, Baghdad School of Wisdom. So it's a take on that. And... Um, I think we all could do with a little bit more wisdom in our life. Yeah. So let me take a little break here for a commercial. The commercial is about your other side, which oh. is your art. Oh, okay. Um, I remember many years ago, it was five, more than five years ago, we did the program mm -hmm. about your artwork. Yes. And in fact, I was, I, when I called you this time, I didn't know that you're doing this. Uh -huh. So I was asking you to do another show about your artwork mm -hmm. and he told me that, well, how about we, if we do something about the wisdom thing? And I said, okay, uh, but what about your art? And he said, well, I've got art. I would like to talk about what you have exhibited in the Middle East right now uh, as we talk. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. What do you have there? Well, I, uh, I got commissioned to do uh, the artwork, uh, which is my other, uh, my other love, my other passion is uh, art and photography. Um, and I got commissioned to do the 60th floor of Burj Khalifa in uh, Dubai, the tallest building in the world. So I have uh, the entire floor is my work. So uh, is the floor like an exhibit hall? or No, it's actually, a, uh, the building is about 167 floors, yes. and a hundred of these were given, each artist was given one entire floor to, to do their entire art. So the whole, uh, well, the whole building is basically a gallery because it has... So this is like the 60th floor is a gallery? It, it's not a gallery. It's yes. actually, uh, you know, it's a, I, I don't really know if it's residential it's or, or commercial. So it's something. It's definitely the So six, they have your work like in the corridors and the elevators. Yeah, it's the permanent display in all of the common areas uh, on the 60th floor. And do you have so, those pictures on the web? Or yeah, so? I have them uh, on my website and I gave them to you. <laughs> well, I, I know you gave them to me. I'm talking about the people here because I didn't want to bring them. Yeah. Maybe we could show them next 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 program. Well, then, up to you, yeah. Uh, let's see if we can. But basically, the, you know, I've got four or five pictures that are your, you know, your latest work. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what are your plans for future artwork? Just uh, Yeah, well... Um, after 9-11, I decided I wanted to show the Arab world in a completely different light to what was being showed after that, that tragic incident. And so I began to photograph my uh, numerous journeys to the Middle East and basically do uh, slideshows and do slide presentations about different regions. So I did one on Egypt, I did one on Morocco, and I did one on the Levant, Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. And my next one that's coming up is going to be Oman, the Sultanate of Oman, which is an absolutely beautiful place, and Yemen. But the thing is, I haven't been able to go to Yemen because of the problems in Yemen. So that will be my next showing, hopefully next year. I have um, an idea for you, can uh, I? Sure. How about doing one on the Arab Americans in the United States, like in the Bay Area? Right. There's a lot of them here. Yeah. And you go to some neighborhoods and you see them walking around and you know. Yeah, well, it's a possibility. I, I, I do photography too, so we, maybe we could go and do and shoot together there. Yeah. So now, where, where we left, as you told us, uh, why did you choose this method to teach about wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you have the reason for that. Well, yeah. just repeat that for me. Well, well why, um, why did you choose this? Uh, I chose it because I felt like it was a uh, a very powerful system that could uh, give people tools to change quite rapidly if they wanted to. And I felt like at this moment in, in history, in the Arab world, that, that people needed tools uh, of understanding themselves and other people, of relating to other people, of creating the best life that they could, um, and not have to do that for the next 10 years. You know, I needed a system that was pretty rapid 
and that did the job, but it was pretty fast. And so I int I'm introducing this uh, to the Arab world in the hopes that, you know, people understand this uh, system and apply it to themselves and in apply it to their lives, to their families, to their communities, to the societies, so that this idea that we can improve who we are and present a better uh, face to the world, yes, but really have a life that is successful and and have the tools to do to do it. So, so you've been doing it in the Arab world, right? Yeah, for like, about four let's years. Say, let's take one country. Which country? I've, I've been doing it in Lebanon and Jordan okay, most. Let's take Jordan. Yeah. Who are your uh, students or people that come to your Well, uh, I have people from all walks of life. I have men and women, uh, more women as always in the seminars than the men, but there's been a, a, a lot of interest uh, by men because it's a, a very practical system. It's a very practical and a rep replicatable system. So people like from human resources departments uh, come to my classes, uh, uh, b people from different business fields, uh, people in communication, just mothers, daughters, uh, people in like in relationship with uh, husbands and wives that want to learn how to understand their partners better. Um, nurses, uh, I haven't had doctors, but oh yeah, I had the uh, university professors show up thinking it was a load of uh, baloney and then were so impressed that they wanted my slideshow. They're like, can I have your slideshow? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but you know, uh, that's how um, so, so people come with skepticism, which is healthy, but then they leave with an absolute conviction that this so, is so an amazing... So two questions then. How do you advertise it over there and how long are those seminars? Well, I teach one day or two day seminars and my idea is that eventually in the Middle East I'll be teach, doing trainings for people so that I will be teaching people to teach other people and that's really my goal. Uh, training and, like teachers? Uh, train, uh, train the trainers, to train the trainers to go out into the field and actually teach it themselves. Um, so uh, that's that's my kind of my my plan, hopefully. So like that would be a course through university. Uh, it can be through university because actually uh, the enneagram is taught at Sta has Stanford, been taught. Yeah. Stanford has yeah, taught it, yeah. and a lot of the top universities in this country teach the enneagram because they realize this is an, an amazing tool for students. So students, of course, I have a lot of students that come, so that are university uh, graduates or actually going to university. People like that come to my classes as well. And you said you're doing it in the in the Bay Area? I'm doing it in the Bay Area. I'll be doing one more before I leave to the Middle East in September again to teach. Yeah, so I mean, that's kind of like the next question is where do you teach in the Bay Area? I teach, I'll probably either teach it in San Jose uh, okay. or in Marin County. Marin County. Yeah, and it'll be a one day or a two day. And when you do that, how, again, how would you advertise it? Uh, usually word of mouth or um, I tell people like you and then they can... Uh, you know, bring their friends, and I, I, I haven't done too much advertising, put it that way. Yeah, because it's an interesting subject. And it's I a very interesting get, subject. I mean, what I, I mean, like you could get, what, 20 people or 100 people or 1,000 people. How many people do you? I don't want 1,000 people. How many people do you want in your <laughs> class? Well, it, 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 that's a really irrelevant <laughs> thing. Okay, I've got five more minutes now, and I need you okay. to, to tell me who what? should attend. And well, I think what I'd like to do, who should attend is everybody that is in a relationship with themselves or other people. So that basically covers everybody. It's really great for students that are in college or in uh, at school because it's going to help them for the rest of their life. A lot of people come to the system when they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and they go, oh my God, if I had known this information when I was in my 20s, how different my life would be. Wow. Uh, I would be a whole other person. My trajectory in life would have taken a whole other way. So uh, what I'd like to end with, if you don't mind, is explaining the nine types, uh, personality types, so people can get an idea of what I'm it's talking about. It's a pre preview for next It's a preview. Program. So yeah. Okay. So there are nine types, and I'm going to go over them pretty quickly. Sure. Uh, so the, the first type or the Enneagram type of personality drive is this person, the one, it's called the one type, is driven by a need to do things right, to do things perfectly, and to reform, to do it 
per, as perfect as they can and reform systems. They hear, they see a system that's broken and they want to make it, it better. They want to fix it. They're usually very principled. They're very quite organized, structured, a lot of character and integrity, the ones. So why they do it and how they do it is they want to do it right and they want to be right as well. Okay, so those are called the ones. The twos, they want to be loved. The most important thing for them is to love and be loved. They're the nurturer types, they're the helper types, they want to be of service. They want to assist you uh, in your life. But also they want, to get, they want to get you to love them. Okay, so they're called the want to be loved types. So that's the type two. The type three, which this country is, um, is the achiever type. They want to go out and make their goals and dreams happen. They're very energetic. It's the type A personality. Uh, they love to, uh, a a a a they're action oriented. You know, uh, you know, Schwarzenegger would be a good example. Tom Cruise is a good example. Um, so we have a lot of type A uh, 